TEC under the concept of the convergence of all of the initiatives. A little bit of uh, uh, housekeeping information before we actually get started today. This first uh, session will be delivered by the SNOMED International team, Alejandro and Susie, who are with us today. Well, you can introduce yourselves afterwards. We have two sessions with the SNOMED team today. So we will be looking at the role of SNOMED in IPS and also a session for December the 20th. Please make sure that you write down in your calendars, which is for the snowstorm tool. So it's close to the end of the year. So the following trainings will be left for January, dates yet to be confirmed. One is for the DID documents that we hope that, that the WHO will support us with that. And then we will go on to uh, deliver some trainings on the IPS uh, with the development team that will be working with the uh, public good. Once the teams and the dates uh, have been confirmed, we will make sure that you get that information. In the meantime, in December, the uh, schedule uh, is ready. That is to say, December the 9th today and December the 20th. So with that, uh, I just want to tell you that in this convergence of initiatives in the coming weeks, uh, there is the G20 WHO Connectathon, where the different uh, trust frameworks uh, are associated to the COVID certificates uh, will be tested. We have six representatives from Latin America and the Caribbean, Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala, uh, Peru, Suriname, and Uruguay will be participating uh, from Tuesday to Thursday in this technical exercise, uh, trying to test the different certificates according to the different and existing trust frameworks because the WHO is trying to achieve interoperability between the different frameworks. It's an interesting exercise. Um, most likely we will be sharing with you the results, how we're doing. We'll be doing that most likely next week. Do not forget that the objective uh, that we're heading towards uh, with all of these uh, technical work uh, in the different initiatives has to do with towards the end of of uh, uh, the first uh, semester next year is to have a proof of concept and a second connectathon where we can exchange uh, a, a patient summary with the IPS profile. We can also check the DDCC certificates and having some extensions also for yellow fever. That's all I wanted to start with. And I want to give the floor to Alejandro and Susie, the SNOMED team, who will be delivering the presentation today. So the floor is yours, guys. Susie? All set? Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's all set. Thank you. All right. I, I see it. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the invite. Um, I'm Susie Roy, and uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Alejandro Lopez Osono. Uh, we are from SNOMED International. Go ahead and next slide. Um, so many, I, I see many familiar names on this call, but just to kind of reiterate, so we're from SNOMED International, the international not-for-profit organization. Um, we are currently, so we really work with member countries, um, member countries being the departments and ministries of health from around the world. Um, we currently have 43 member countries. Um, those are all shown here in dark blue, and um, we also have a large number of SNOMED CT users across the world. So SNOMED International, we produce and maintain SNOMED CT, the world's largest clinical terminology and ontology, and um, we do various things. So I myself am uh, the customer relations manager for the Americas. So I assist our customers everywhere from Canada all the way through uh, Chile and Argentina and all the countries in between. Um, I'm also the collaboration specialist. So I work with our international standards bodies, um, uh, I guess like kind of our sister organizations like HL7 International, WHO, many others. Um, and so uh, I help to deliver uh, SNOMED CT to people in all of these countries that you see here. Um, Alejandro, um, he is our implementation specialist and he's kind of uh, my guru for everything. Um, he assists with the adoption and implementation of SNOMED CT across all of these countries that you see here. Um, and he is also um, a global expert on not only SNOMED CT, but all uh, global 
uh, standards used for health uh, data. And um, he and I, along with all of our colleagues at Snowman International, um, are always uh, available to help anyone, not with only Snowman CT, but understanding other standards as well. So we're really excited to talk with you uh, over the next successive, um, uh, I guess, uh, educational sessions on Snowman CT. Um, some of the special um, specific use cases such as with the IPS and how you can access it via snowstorm in the next series. Um, and also really excited to see that you guys are looking at um, uh, I, uh, use of fire for IPS because that is some of the work that we've been detailed on. Um, before I move on, I also just wanted to notice um, that it looks like um, you have been deeply involved in some of the WHO work around the uh, vaccine certificates. And again, that's really exciting because uh, for us, NOMAD CT being a global terminology that's used for health data, we work very closely with the WHO on their DDCC initiatives and um, all of the content that they need um, for use in the capture and exchange for that uh, DDCC vaccine certificate information, they have all of the specific mappings to SNOMED CT concepts. So again, that just kind of shows how, while we um, uh, work with all of our member countries that are shown here on this map, but we also work uh, very collaboratively with international organizations such as WHO on a number of initiatives to help with um, uh, health data and their interoperability. Um, Alejandra, next slide. So of course today we are focused on uh, the IPS and um, it looks like uh, you are already uh, experts on IPS so I will not go into uh, deep detail on this but just wanted to kind of give a really brief overview about the IPS being a healthcare summary of individual of the patient's point of care at a point of time. Um, the IPS, the International Patient Summary is a minimal non-exhaustive uh, patient set that is used for the uh, encoding and capture of the um, individual's healthcare data, again, in a point of time. Um, it is specially agnostic and condition independent, um, but of course it is all clinically relevant. Um, it's meant to be simple and implementable and used by anyone at any time, any place. And of course, we want it to be able to uh, exchange across borders, within and across borders. And so uh, ensuring that uh, SNOMED CT, which is the primary terminology that is used for um, in uh, IPS, um, is maintained current and up to date, and uh, again, available freely across uh, all countries. Alejandro, next slide, please. In order to do that, we work very closely with um, a large number of standards development organizations from around the world. Um, we actually have a cross SDO uh, group that meets regularly to ensure that requirements that are needed in one SDO are understood and can um, interoperate and work with another SDO. So there is a whole ecosystem of various artifacts that are produced in order to uh, ensure that the IPS can be used freely and um, accessed by all. Um, so just for example, we work very closely with, again, HL7 International and IHG International to assure that any of those exchange um, uh, standards and protocols that are required by those particular standards, um, they are able to interoperate with SNOMED CT. Uh, we also work closely with SEN and ISO. Actually, just before this call, I thought it was going to be a little late because I was working with the ISO TC2115 uh, um, on the IAPS uh, initiative. So this is ongoing work, but just to kind of reiterate that this is a global um, uh, product that is uh, has many artifacts from different organizations, and we all work together to ensure that everything that um, implementers are going to need for the IPS work together. And um, with regards to the terminology, you can see right in the very center of this diagram, SNOMED CT is listed. Um, we ensure that any of the content that is needed by HL7, IAG, SEN, it is included in our IPS um, 
products. And those IPS products um, are available freely and anyone can use those. Um, Alejandro, next slide. I think I have one more slide. So at that center of that diagram, you saw a SNOMED IPS. So again, we work very closely with our sister organizations to ensure that any of the content that is needed is produced into the, what we call the SNOMED CT HL7 IPS free set. This is a free set of all of those concepts and codes that are needed for IPS artifacts. And we make sure that those are available freely. We also have a large number of SNOMED CT members. Um, again, going back to kind of thinking about that um, blue global map, um, a lot of those members who are utilizing SNOMED CT already, they can uh, they need to something a little bit different than just the flat file. So we make a SNOMED CT um, technical uh, specification uh, product, which we call the SNOMED CT IPS preferred set. And that's available for anyone who's already implementing SNOMED CT within their systems to be able to interoperate with those who do not have access to SNOMED CT already, um, but might want to with the freely available free set. Just uh, literally weeks ago, we released a brand new artifact called the IPS terminology. And Alejandro is going to go into a little bit more detail on this, but essentially the IPS terminology has taken the IPS free set, so that free, uh, free set of a uh, flat list of codes, and we have um, included a some of the SNOMED CT sub-ontology of that. So all of the parents of those concepts and codes are now freely available, so you can do minimal um, data analytics with the data that are collected for IPS needs. And so I'm going to leave it at there so Alejandro can go a little bit more detailed into IPS terminology and IPS resources, but just to kind of give you guys an overview of the land where um, Snowman International, we are, you know, used across the world, but also we are doing things to work with other organizations to ensure that um, any of the health data standards that are needed by people who want to adopt and implement the IPS. Um, we're working with the organizations who do it, but also we make sure that the actual SNOMED CT resources that you need are freely available and always up to date. Wow. With that, Alejandro. Thank you, Susie. Muchas gracias. Bueno, muy amable. Bueno, gracias por la invitación. Well, thank you for the invitation. And as Susie was saying, this is the new part. The, the, the idea of today's presentation is to talk to about uh, SNOMED IPS, but also this new thing, which is uh, the SNOMED terminology and how it is used. When you have a new full edition of SNOMED, like the national or the international version, and when you use the summarized uh, edition, which is the free one. A few years ago, IPS free set existed, which is the free subset of IPS with about 8,000 concepts. And the other one is a little bit larger, but it's still not quite important for IPS. But this is the 8,000 IPS free set. And this is a sub license, so as to speak, of SNOMED. It has 350,000 concepts, the international edition, and there are extensions depending on the different editions. So we're here we're talking about a smaller edition. But the new thing about this IPS terminology that Susie mentioned is trying to improve the ideas of using list because the lists are, are okay, relatively simple to capture the information on a list, but it's very difficult to analyze the information because you lose the hierarchy, you lose the structure, so you cannot group a similar content. So the objective of the IPS terminology is to have a, 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 a sub-ontology, you know, SNOMED is an ontology. So there are formal logical methods that allow to withdraw a uh, subontology, and the process is to bring the concepts that, that you want to see, and then rec reconstitute the structure of the original ontology, but only adding the necessary concepts in order to have this new structure, which is not only those concepts, but those are the ones that we add uh, in order for it to have the right shape. So this is a development, a process that we have developed with the University of Manchester. 
we applied a logic and there is a terminology that has to do with the IPS, but that has 15,000 concepts. That is to say, we double the, what the IPS, a free set, which had 18,000, and now we have 15,000, even more than that. So if in the past said asthma, now we can have, for example, respiratory obstruction, a, a disorder of bronchus, a disorder of thorax, or related concepts, or for example, broken structure, which are other attributes of that same concept, or different types of attributes. That's more or less what it is. And this is available for you to take a look at, but it's a free alternative. SNOMED, as Susie was saying, works with member countries. And if a country becomes a member, then this is, uh, becomes proprietary. And when they become then members, they are part of the governance of the decision-making uh, committee. And But this is uh, totally free for these uh, member countries. But when you're in a country that is not a member country, well, there's a license that needs to be paid for, with the exception of very poor countries where there is a humanitarian license. But in this case, uh, the IPS terminology is totally free anywhere. You don't need a license or anything at all. You just register and then you can freely download it. So having this ter terminology, the interesting thing is that you can get uh, the country members, Uruguay, Chile, Argentina, El Salvador, can use NOMED in its full version, but the countries that are not members uh, can use this free version to uh, communicate and to be interoperable using SNOMED CT. Let me click here so that I can share my, my browser here. And this is uh, very similar to the SNOMED general browser. It's in English, but still, here we have the taxonomy, and you can see the different hierarchies. So it's no longer just a list as it used to be, but now it's a mini ontology with these mini concepts, 1800 uh, 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 clinical events, uh, uh, some clinical findings, uh, organizations, uh, 1600 pharmaceutical products uh, to the uh, key drugs uh, from the WHO and so on and so forth. So within this uh, sub-ontology, you put, for example, here asthma, it's in English, so you will find different types of asthma. So it's not the same kind or the same amount that you might find in the general snowman, but when you put Aten or LOL, you can see if 25, 50 milligrams or 100, and if you open these up, you have all the attributes. You have the pharmaceutical formula, the tablet, the dosage, etc. cetera. So the, all the SNOMED content is represented here. This is the browser that I have just showed you. This is a snapshot. We will give you the presentation later on with the links so that you can have access to everything. And the idea is just to share with you how this is documented and how we work on the implementation of the IPS in SNOMED. And there is an interesting concept here, which is terminology binding. How? On an information system, you can link it, you can bind it to to a subcontent, a terminology that is the values of that concept. So in the documentation of IPS, you're going to have the necessary information in order to identify that subset, uh, the terminology or the international version of a small mid, whichever corresponds uh, for that field in particular. And the idea is for IPS terminology, since it's no longer a list and you can and you can use all of these hierarchy, you can use a you can you use a, you can use a server. That's one of the big changes. We're going to talk about that in snowstorm, but we're going to be looking at uh, some examples without going into details, but you will be able to see the benefits of being able to implement a terminology like this uh, using an open source uh, browser to instead of having to use a unique list where you have to program your, your own uh, browser or um, you have to make other adjustments in order to get the, 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 the contents. And at the same time here, this uh, IPS terminology, not only does it solve the, the terminology binding, but it's also going to be used for international interoperability. So you can interoperate in countries that have different terminology. Some will have the full uh, uh, SNOMED, other only the IPS, but they will be able to communicate uh, between them. So let's suppose that the official HL7 IPS implementation guide in FIRE says that the binding or the value set that is used uh, for condition, for example, 
care for, for a list of problems uh, consists on all of the clinical now, uh, findings, is not all of the events, uh, and all of the situation. This is using SL annotation, uh, which is uh, the... the and, and, and here, when you see that in HL7, basically they are inclusion, inclusion, exclusion. So there are different ways of excluding this. This is a type of language, but to say that it includes all of the concepts of the clinical finding and also all of these other ones, all of the events and also all of the situations and so on. And this same specification of this terminology binding, this value set, the definition, different ways of saying the same thing, this definition can also be executed with different Nomad uh, editions. So, so I can execute this in, uh, in the international version, and I have then 124,000 concepts. If we run it with the United States version, it's 129,000 because it has included uh, findings and events, and therefore there are more concepts there. In Canada, 124.6. So but if we go to the IPS terminology, it's almost 7,000. So just for you to see the difference in terms of volume, but you must always keep in mind that uh, this was done based on real sources. Uh, so it is based on the core subset of the National Library of Medicine and other sources uh, that were used and that were built based on experience in different hospitals. So these 7,000, although it might seem like it's a big difference, are really selected by frequency. So when you're going to use them, this has a great large coverage and these 124,000 include a whole lot more that uh, some of them are rarely used. So the, the, the number might be uh, misleading. It doesn't quite represent the, 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 the coverage. So this is how, based on a definition of a value set, you can use the terminology that you have available. So for example, I'm in Uruguay and I can use the Uruguay version and connect to IPS. If I'm in Chile, I can use the Chilean version. I don't know if there's one far formally published, but if not, you can use the international version. In Argentina, you select Argentina. El Salvador has not published one yet, so it'll use the international version, which are these uh, uh, full editions here, but in Brazil, Bolivia, and Peru, for example, we can use the IPS terminology and it'll still be compatible as we will see right away. Because the objective of this is to exchange data and exchange we goes goes in one way when a country that is not a member creates an electronic document an ips fire document and it shares it with a member country this one has ips terminology and this one has the international edition for example so when it travels in this direction, everything that is here is obviously in the international edition. This is very easy because we get an IPS that, that I fully understand. If I'm the member country, when I receive that, I will receive that as a subset of SNOMED. So it's okay. But if I'm the member country and I want to share my IPS to another country that is only using IPS terminology, some concepts that we use might not be included in IPS terminology. So there we could have a little bit of a friction. If I give it as is, I might give them a concept that they're, they, don't, they don't have included as a part of those 7,000 findings or concepts that, that we just talked about. So here we have some possibilities as to how to solve that interoperability between countries uh, traveling in this direction that have a different version of SNOMED. The same thing, for example, if the United States uh, shares with Argentina, you, we just saw that the US added new concepts that Argentina does not have. And the United States uses some of these new concepts, Argentina is not gonna have them. So we have to see the level of language that will be used between these two countries. And that is the international edition, which is common for both. And when we're talking, for example, about Uruguay and Peru, the common thing that they have is IPS, IPS terminology, which is that subset of 15,000 concepts. So the, the options are to send both local codes. This is the original code that we have. And this is a code which is as similar as possible, which is also included in this common layer that we have. For example, IPS terminology. And then the other option is to send the local code, even if you don't have it, and with the receiving country can then make a conversion using a, a translator. 
And this is when it's, uh, when it's defined, you define that. If you send an IPA, then you have the responsibility of using a language that both understands, a level of definition that both understand, or they can, they can be transformed by the one that receives it. Now, the interesting thing is that this is done automatically. And let me show you how this is done. So CCLs are very powerful because uh, it allows you to do these different types of uh, operations. Let's say that I have in the international edition and I call, choose a concept which is called opercular epilepsy. Opercular uh, epilepsy is a very particular type of epilepsy and neurologists might understand that this is very particular. Now, this epilepsy is not part of the IPS terminology, so we share this concept just that it is. Uh, and if they don't have the full stomach, they probably won't understand it. So we can do this an ECL like this one. You can see you have a fire expand, which is an expansion operation of a value set in fire that says, uh, bring me the ancestors of the opercular epilepsy that are a member of the IPS and also that, that will bring the ones that are the most similar, but all of the ones are up to the, the root concepts. So, and at the same time, from that, take away, and that's why it says minus, the ancestors of the ancestors. So it's only a thin layer, which has the most similar concepts that I have of this epilepsy. And so oftentimes it'll be just a one concept, and in some cases, more than one. And it's when, when it's more than one, then you can make a decision, you can share them all, because they are all true, e even if uh, even if uh, they, they, they overlap at some point in time, or you can pick one and you can choose that, that one from the list. Uh, it could be based, I don't know, on, on, on frequency, for example. So in this case, uh, running this uh, transforms this uh, concept of opercular epilepsy is translated, transformed into epilepsy re uh, that is lo localization related, and that is in IPS terminology. So these two different groups that have different SNOMED versions can interoperate uh, by sharing similar concepts in the similar layer that they share. And we're going to see that we have this example here which is a demo of terminology bindings. This is for free, you can have access to it. And what it has is an example of a documentation of the terminology bindings for each one of the different aspects that are currently being controlled with a, a SNOMED in the IPS. Each of them has the uh, the the full IPS or the IPS terminology. So for example, let's search for asthma here. And I find all of these options. In fact, instead of doing that, I can just click here and see how many options we have, 126,000 options. And when we click on binding, it shows me these are the clicker finding, clinical events, events or situation. This is for the problem list of finding. Now, if I click here, I can copy this ECL and I can paste it in a SNOMED browser. You can click here and then you can paste it and then you can execute this. And then the other thing is that I can click this button here and it opens up a fire to the snowstorm that the international browser has, which is public, and it allows you to see these words with the browser on the back. So here we can see how an expansion of a value set works. And here we can see this is SNOMED info, ACT, this is the version. And here's the ECL that we were talking about, this restriction language, which defines the scope of the consultation. And these are the 126,000. This is just a page one. So this is like a guide that allows you to see how to search. For example, allergies. We can we can look for allergies, and here you can find fifty three thousand in SNOMED International, and here we can put uh, aspirin, and you can find the substance or the product and different things uh, that allow for 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 this. I can go to the binding and I can look at all the substances, pharmaceutical products, uh, and all the properties. Uh, this has been literally taken from the fire guide. So IPS fire. We can look at this uh, fire summary and it's taken from here. We can go to terminal artifacts and then terminology and we can go here, for example. 
uh, allergies and intolerance of substance, IPS there. And it's explained here, these are the substance condition and the unknown. The substance condition has the substance, pharmaceutical product and the properties. So it's pulled directly from here. It has been translated into what you see here when you click on binding, 53,000, but in which is nomad version. So, and the interesting thing is here, you can change the version. First, what server you're gonna be using, whether it's a full editions or you use the IPS terminology. And also, if you want to use any edition, in particular, the Argentinian edition, and you can click here, Spanish, and then you click on binding, and then you start finding the other concepts. Uh, this is in Spanish, but I can write asthma here. Oh, my, my apologies, I should have written aspirin. It might take a little while, but it, it, it's coming in English. So I, I don't know why it's not being, it's not pulling the, the, the Spanish version, but it doesn't matter. That's the way that you can change to different editions and look at then the different quantities. In this case, it's 83,000. So then at the bottom, what you can do, and let me refresh this, you, you can, it immediately goes to the international edition from December the 31st. Uh, here, uh, here I have a filter, which is the substances uh, that, I mean, it's the same binding, but it has an additional thing, and that, uh, that it has to be a member of the international patient summary, which is the set that is published in the international version in order to make sure that there is compatibility between the different editions. Uh, this only has 292, so it changes quite a bit. One additional thing, if here we change and we go to IPS terminology, here you can use what a country would actually use, that a country that is not a member. So when having changed that and when clicking on binding, I can see that I have 3,200. So when making that change, we are looking at the same bindings, 7,000 for the findings of problems here. I have 88,000 immunizations and different concepts of vaccinations and diseases related to the vaccinations, procedures, 1,100 medications also. And here I'm in the world of IPS, that, but that is what a non-member country would see. And I can switch from one to the other by changing the server here. You can do that. And then if you want to download it, you can click on that. That downloads an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which shows all of the bindings for each of these domains. It has the ECL that is used for each one of these. And there's one additional example, which is interesting, which is this interoperability, interoperability demo. When you're looking at the international edition, you can look for something, for example, asthma. Let me write it in English, though. So and you click on it, it says, this concept is part of the IPS terminology. So that's not a problem. But if we look at asthma, but let me look for something, I don't know, that's not as common. Asthma caused by a wood dust. Uh, and I click on that, it says, the corresponding concept in the IPS terminology is allergic asthma. So on the back, it's carrying out uh, that uh, transformation, tra translating it uh, from the IPS terminology, sorry, from the larger IPS, uh, how to translate that into the smaller terminology in order to be able to share it with a country that is not a member state, or how a country that receives a concept that is not included can look for a service such as this one and get the translation into a concept that they can use, that they can put into the hierarchy and use it. And this is... Uh, I mean, the, the programmers here, if you open up the net here and you can look for a type of asthma, for example, here, let me see, hay fever, you can see that here you have the calls. This is the fire calls and you can then take a look at that if you wish, just to learn how it actually works. So that is The, the, the demo of this side, which is a demonstration of the different bindings. I will put that in, in the chat pod so that you can have access to this. And then lastly, we also wanted to show a shorter summary, and this is just to mention what the next uh, presentation is going to be about. Uh, behind this, we have, on the back of this, we have a, a terminology server. 
with this fire. Some are free and some other are paid for and commercial. You can have access to one or other. So there's one that I will share with you that has all the options. We're going to be looking at that in the next session, which has a different references to different commercial vendors that we know. But SNOMED International, in order to simplify the adoption, uh, has one that is totally open source and it's called Snowstorm. It's Apache to no cost. And what you do is that you can install it you can upload it with a SNOMED version. It could be the international version, your country version, or it could be the IPS edition. And then you can start it. And once you start it, you have an all API fire to make the consultations just like we did just now. Basically, these are expansion of value sets. Uh, we do have all the traditional operations, but mostly they are value set operations. And lastly, I just wanted to comment that there is one additional way of implementing SNOMED within an information system and also within IPS, and that is through mapping. If you already have vocabulary and you say we have this diagnosis vocabulary or for vaccinations or procedures, and I just want to have the best uh, SNOMED code for the terminology that we're already using, I don't want to start from implementing SNOMED from scratch. Uh, I would rather use uh, my own. Then we can see here how you can do that using a SNOMED tool. If this is a free tool, Snap to SNOMED. Uh, it's for free, as I was saying. You can register and you can use your uh, SNOMED International Confluence account. And if not, you can click here, you can open it. It goes to a form, it's going to request your data and you can open up a, a, a free account. Once you have it, well, you log in. And you get to a tool that allows you to manage uh, mapping. And this allows you to import mapping. We did this this other day and it can be interesting. So you can import them and then you can automatically execute automatic uh, mapping. So based on the text, uh, this is the source. Uh, these are uh, codes and this is text. Uh, and here, he, the SNOMED code, which is as similar to this concept. When you import that, you can click on a button and, for example, dengue fever with dengue. A smoking related health issues, it has been mapped to finding re findings related to health uh, insurance issues. Now, probably it's not uh, very exact, but uh, for example, TB would probably be very similar. So you can check all of this mapping and then you can export that uh, to an Excel uh, spreadsheet where you have the coding of your own vocabulary with the best or closest uh, SNOMED. Now, there are tasks here, for example, you can uh, allocate this task for me as a uh, uh, as an author, or at least the one selected. And since I have them there, now I can uh, choose the task. I can go in and I can change those maps. Uh, for example, this map that we saw just here, I don't like it. Uh, and then you can click in here and then you can search. Yeah, so smoking, I don't know, I can only look at things that I want. Smoker here, I can bring it here and I can put it as a broader. It's not quite exactly, but it's a broader terminology. You put it there, you you approve it, uh, and then you can go into the next one. That allows you then to do the mapping. You can then download it, and then you can do the SNOMED implementation in the IPS without having to access all of SNOMED or changing things that you already have. So this is in the case that you already have uh, something running that has your own terminology and that has a reasonable volume to start with. So can you use this uh, version of SNOMED uh, uh, with a CDAR2 and not fire? Well, we, we, we would have to see. I mean, the document might be CDA, but the terminology server, I think that's the old CTS2, but there are not many CTS2 open source servers available to do that. I would save the data in CDAR2, but using a fire server to have access to the terminology, even if you don't store it. 
And that's what I wanted to, to share with you and I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Alejandro and Susie. Are there any questions? Uh, we do have a few minutes left. Alejandro, uh, sí. Fernando. Alejandro, this is Fernando. Hello. For allergies, I think that there are three subsets that the IPS is using, right? Uh, I think it uses substances. I believe that it also loses the ATC the codes from the WHO, but also some that are specific to say that there are no allergies. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, about the coding for allergies. Yes, uh, sure. This is the last one that I have opened for you to take a look at. So here we have the IPS terminology as the one that is preferred, and then the ATC, and then the others are here as additional bindings uh, that are optional that you may want to use. Now, with this one is rather peculiar. If you open up this definition, you can see that it's made up of two value sets. So one is the SNOMED one, which is this one at the top. And then there's another one, which is the absent or unknown, which has these values, which is when uh, which is a combination of SNOMED and five additional codes. So you could combine those two. Storing them somehow. That's the only real difference there. And also snowstorm allows you to do this, exactly this, uh, combining different uh, or up, uh, putting within snowstorm uh, codings that are not SNOMED. I mean, aside from SNOMED, you could use, I don't know, CD10 or list of your own, like these uh, five concepts that we have here. Uh, and once you have it like this uh, uploaded, uh, then you can uh, add some additional ones. Uh, so for example, uh, here you can use this value set and not only the SNOMED one, which uh, combines the others. Yep, Betania. Hi, well, first of all, I want to thank you for the presentation. Very good presentations, both of you. I do have a doubt regarding the snow meter. The first code is uh, automatic, right? And then you can, that, that, that is right. I mean, there is an auto map. And then what you have to do is assign it to everything that you have loaded, I don't know, 1000 uh, or 100. You upload it, then you assign it to yourself. And then there's an auto map button. And then that runs and it maps it all. I mean, if you want to do it by one, sure, you, you, cannot, you may not click on uh, on automap and do it one by one. But if not, first you approve it and then you validate it. That's usually faster. Now it's going to depend on the text. If there are some that are very peculiar, that doesn't really follow the terminology or the words that is similar to SNOMED, it could be a little bit more complicated or cumbersome, but yeah. Now, regarding the language, in our case, it's in, in, in Spanish and this is in English. Well, the mapping is easier because once you create the concept, you then select what version you want to use. So you upload your, your terminology in Spanish and then you use the Spanish edition, even the Uruguayan uh, edition. There are some editions that are not uploaded and we can do so. But if no one has ever used the Uruguayan version, then the, but we can do it for you. And then you compare your text with that of Uruguay instead of comparing it against another one. Okay, I get it, very clear. Thank you, thank you very much. Jose is asking, sorry, sorry, Sergio, Sergio. But Jose was asking what is the, the, the difference? Vidalva uh, Mecum, Vidalva de Mecum has uh, interactions, uh, maximums, uh, which is codified with SNOMED, but which is oriented uh, to a specific process. Sergio, please, the floor is yours. Hello. First, I want to start by yeah, thanking you for, for sharing this with us. I do have a question, and uh, maybe it's more of a reflection than a question, really. I mean, we agree that we can get uh, all of these uh, information from the patient uh, registry, but looking at the patient international summary, but my doubt or reflection actually comes uh, on this uh, in this sense. 
we use a national extension, but, or if we're going to, to go to, to all the systems that are only using APS, then that means that it's going to be a reduction of concepts towards more generic concepts. So my question is, up to what extent are we not altering the, the, the record, uh, which uh, was uh, very explicit at the beginning, which uh, then we codify this and then we translate it into the smaller version, which is somehow now automated. And we might be migrating from one very specific concept uh, towards another one. And sure, we might infer the root one, uh, the, the parent uh, concept, uh, but, um, uh, you know, in the case that this uh, actually happened, we should know that this is a summary that is not uh, altered really, but that there has been some, um, or can I say this, uh, that there is a diagnosis uh, or that, 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 that uh, it has actually somehow been changed. Uh, I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, up to what extent are we actually creating an automation and then in, at some point altering, changing? I mean, how, how certain can we be that, that that alteration is accurate or do we have any flag maybe that can say, uh, you know, we're warning uh, that there's an automated change of the data here or something. I, I, I don't know if I'm making myself understood. Uh, I, yeah, I think I understand that. Uh. The, the, the difference here is the context, because it's not a record. We're not putting that in the main medical record, which is the truth that the doctor has written. This is only for interoperability purposes, and you have the best detail possible. What FIRE has is that you can send several codes for the same entity. You can have a SNOMED and a, a CDS. And when you do that, you don't have the exact same level of detail. You know, maybe it says a, a tumor of the gallbladder, uh, and then in the CD10, it might say uh, other uh, problems uh, of the gallbladder. Uh, so it's something similar. When you include several codes associated with the same entity, those codes will have the best possible uh, detail for the call system that they are representing or for the version of the call systems that they are representing. So we know SNOMED General is going to be more specific. Uh, the other one, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it has some limitations, obviously, that the context provides, uh, and uh, the, the, the CD10 also has. Uh, and But the three basically refer to the same thing, but they get to the deepest level possible that each version can get to. So the objective here is interoperability, so I think it's enough to define that these comes from the IPS terminology. So that's the context. Okay, yes, I... I, I I agree, I agree, and I understand. No, but for implementation purposes, this is good, but it would be good that the other party, the counterpart, understands that the, this pro that it has undergone this process. Sure, you can have an alert or some warning. I mean, if there's a code that was created in the IPS version, it might say this concept was created in a limited SNOMED version or something along those lines. Susie, do you want to comment on the licensing? Uh, the on the on the licensing, yeah, there was a question in the uh, chat box regarding uh, use of the IPS terminology, and the IPS terminology is freely available to anyone anywhere, um, member country or non-member country. We purposely made that freely available so that people could start to have a little bit of a SNOMED ontology um, for their IPS uses. So um, it's available via Creative Commons. You can download it directly from our website. Um, and uh, yeah, it's freely available to everyone. Creo que es interesante también lo que comentaba Susie en el chat. And what si Susie was saying in the chat is also interesting. If you have the full version, use the full version. You don't need, you don't need IPS terminology because uh, that has the ref set uh, that I was saying and the one that allows you to transform to Sergio. No, no, you're right. That, that, that was it. I was just giving an okay. I was just, I was just giving a thumbs up, basically. All right, all right, all right. Lucia also has a question in the chat board. I think that probably this is the last one. Is there a possibility to download the mapping as a fire concept map? No, we don't have the option. We don't have the option of downloading it as a fire concept map. We're going to have that in the future. I think we're going. We're working on a tool that will translate formats uh, so that we can have it into a RF two, but also fire. It's a very good question. Mm -hmm.
Yes, you there you would also have to 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 have a call system of your of your your own terminology, sure. Yeah, that is that's precisely the pathway to do so. Does the use of have a cost? The there's another question on the chat pod. Let's see, our demo tools are, are free. The server that's on the back end is limited, it has use limited usage. I mean, if you use it, you know, if you put it in a software and it's being used very frequently, then it will block you and then you won't be able to use it any longer. But it can be used for a demo, for examples, but you cannot put it into production. You know, if you install the open source, but it's just like that one and you will have no limitations. But to play around with it and to learn, uh, it's good. In fact, if you close, if, if you click on top, you have the, the source code. If you want to see how in Angular there's an autocomplete, you can, this is the demo, right? You can click there and this is the whole project there. So it doesn't have a server, it uses a browser. So that's the Angular projector. And here you can go to source, uh, app, the autocomplete binding, this is the Angular component that does the autocomplete. So we um, we try to make, oh, sorry, Alejandro. Please, the, please. The, sorry, the, um, the pause in between. Um, just so everyone knows that, um, yeah, we uh, are an international not-for-profit organization. So we try to make all of our tooling uh, freely available um, as Alejandro was just pointing out all the source coding. Um, but unfortunately we are not in the position of being able to uh, provide tooling um, uh, resourcing or services for everyone. But uh, we definitely make sure that all of our tools, um, all of the coding is available. The source coding is available freely. Sorry. Bueno, thank you very much, very Susi. Good. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Susi. It's four o'clock on the dot. Just some closing remarks. Thank you very much, Susi, for your presentation. And you too, Alejandro. Forget, don't forget that we have another session on the 20th, same time, same channel. Tune in. And do not forget that the presentations and the recordings will be available in the Raxel Moodle. We did have some technical issues, but we've overcome those. They've been solved. It's up and running and all of this information will be updated once it's available. That's it, really. Next week, only the LAC pass people. There's no training on Friday, but we do have a technical committee. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone. Have a very nice weekend. Bye-bye.